Hallelujah. Amen. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to Him. He himself took our infirmities and carried our diseases. These are the reasons. This is, this is what makes us to go and preach. This is what makes us to go and tell people that our God is still alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the reason why we tell people, I don't care. Jesus loved everybody. Jesus loved the Muslims. He loved the Hindus. There in KZM, we were doing healing meetings and we are inviting everybody. Say, said, come, 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 come. They used to come. In their numbers. And then that is when I've seen Muslims hate Jesus, isn't it? And they hate church. But when we're doing that meeting, <laughs> you see Muslims, those ones, they cover their head. They come and line up looking for Jesus to touch them. Amen. <laughs> I am telling you the truth. And he touched them. There was a Muslim man that came. He was pregnant for 22 years. <clears throat> 22 years pregnancy. A man. Yes. Asthma for 21 years. And when he saw what God was doing, he came to a meeting and said, Lord, I want pastor, I want you to pray for me. I am looking for a job. And while he was talking to me, God said, if you don't pray for his head, he's going to die. <laughs> I said, okay, I've heard you. Sit down. When I finished ministering, preaching the word of God, I went straight to that man. I lay hands on his stomach. And I lay hands on his chest. And I said, settled. The man went home. When he go to the toilet, he said, half moon. You know moon? Yes. Moon. Half came out from him. Wow. And an object with three, two hands, three eyes, came out of him. His stomach went straight. Wow. This man was became an evangelist suddenly. Amen. He was telling everybody in the home. That place is a Muslim stronghold. He was telling everybody, Jesus, he said, I went to Monalas. I went to everywhere, they didn't help me. I went to Pastor Sam, he, Jesus helped me. Muslims were killed because the man was a prominent man, no man in that community. Muslims came out in numbers. Wow. God was healing them as no man. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> another Muslim guy came, paralyzed for 23 years. He couldn't walk. Wow. When he came there, I, he, he, he said, he, he had it. This man came in. The meeting was starting by 12 o'clock. He came by 9 a.m. Because that day I slept in the church. Praying all night. I only left the church around 9 in the morning. When I was leaving, I saw a man sitting there on the front. I didn't even know. I went. By the time we came back for the service, the Muslim man, he two crutches. He came and sat down. When it was time for ministration, I said, I said, if you believe, here, yeah, Jesus will heal you. He said to himself, he believed. Immediately he said that. He said he doesn't know what he did. The two crutches dropped. And he was standing there shaking, shaking. As I laid my hands on him, his leg was strengthened. After 23 years, he walked for the first time. Amen. He went about telling people, Muslim one man also. He repented and converted and gave his life to Jesus. Amen. Today as I'm talking to you, that man is a pastor. Pastor in Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. A Muslim. Amen. And you know what I'm saying to you? Amen. Church is tired of theology. Church is tired of story, story, story. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Pastor Lani. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> praise the Lord. I'll see you next Sunday. And that's what we're doing. Why the world is dying? Mm. People are crying, please, I need help. Mm. And we are busy playing games inside the church. Mm. We are busy fighting one another. Yes. We are busy dragging husband inside the church. Yeah. We are busy <laughs> praying. The pastor will divorce his wife so that you can marry because pastor married the wrong wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're doing inside the so-called church of Jesus. Yes. And you think Jesus will not punish us? He says you are the salt of the earth. But he said if the salt loses its saltiness, he says it's no longer good for anything. It's useless. He said you'll be trained away. And guess who will deal with you? He said you'll be trampled on that food by men. Not Satan, no. <laughs> men will deal with us. I heard in church, there is a church here in Jobel, one in Jobel or Pretoria. Why they were busy? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The same thieves came in there. Ta -ta -ta -ta, everybody on the floor. They robbed everybody. Took all their money, took all their phones, every their laptop, take and left. Where were Jesus? What is that Jesus they're serving? It's because we are playing games. He said, Man, we trample us on that food. I heard that another pastor was preaching on the altar. Somebody is going, just came inside the church and took a knife. Pah! On the altar. He fell there and died. A pastor. When you lose your something, wake up, 
know because it might be very, very late. Amen. When you lose it, you say you are no long, you are now useless. Amen. Useless, thrown away, and men will trample us underfoot. Imagine why the government will wake up one morning and they want to tell us how to serve our Jesus. What do you think that is happening? Because we become useless as a church. Today, they, they don't even, when they have to make it laws, they don't even consult the church because they know the church and don't even forget them. They will go and gather Muslims and Hindus and other atheists and they decide. Look at that one, see Arel. They were gathering Sangoma's people and they are the one making law. They want to tell us, they regulate us. How many times have you had Sangomas killing people and eating their body? How many times have you heard a thief carrying the news like the way it carried when they say a hey, pastor is giving people petrol? It's because we are no longer useful. And that's what we must wake up. We need the power of God to be restored back in Jesus Christ. Amen. We need the glory of God to come back. Amen. We have given the glory away. A cardboard. That is what is happening. The glory has left. We need the glory. The Bible said, in God, the people in the Acts of Apostles, the Bible said, when people saw miracles, signs and water, the, people, the Bible said, the people were afraid of them. And no one dare come close to them. <clears throat> they were afraid of them. Because when they see you, they should see the glory of God. Yeah. Because the Bible said, I have created you for my glory. He did not create us for shame and disgrace. He created us to carry his glory. What is the glory of God? His character, his actions, his act. We are supposed to carry it, his glory. People look at us, they see the character of Jesus. When they look at us, they see love, they see compassion, they see kindness, they see this thing. When they look at us also, they see the power of God. That is what a Christian is supposed to be. The full price has been paid. We're not supposed to be running around like people that doesn't have hope. Yes. We have hope. We have everything. Mm. We are the one in charge. The power has been restored. Mm. Satan took it from Adam. Thought that it will never come back again. Jesus visited him in hell and took the key back. Mm. He came out and said, All the power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. But I don't need this power in heaven. What do I do with power? He said, Behold, I give unto you power. Use it to go and deal with the devil. And we are here, the devil is dealing with us. We are dying premature in the church. There are some pastors, their calling is to bury people. That's their calling. Everywhere somebody died, they phone him, he is going to bury people. When I went to KZN, I told them, I said, listen, I didn't come here to bury people. That if I want to be burying people, I'll stay in Nigeria. I can't come here to be burying people. I came here to give people life. When I finish saying it, people carry their bag. It's okay, we are going now. If we die, who will bury us? Yes. They carry their bag, they left. All of them left. Because I said, they didn't come to bury me. Because that is what is the mentality. If I die, who will bury me? Do you come to this earth to die for prophet to bury you? Is it not better for us to die and walk on the street after we have been able to fulfill our destiny on earth? Who cares? Heaven cares when you have fulfilled your destiny. Jesus has given us power. Wherever you find the devil, deal with him. Wherever you find the enemy, trample upon him. Amen. Serpents and scorpions, they are the symbols of demon spirit and his agents. Amen. Trample them under your foot. It's not supposed to give you sleep, night sleep, sleepless night. No way. You pack away from your heart because a doctor is beating you. Shame on you as a Christian. No, 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 no. I can't go back to that house. I can't go back. You know what happened? Look, look at my body. Look, who was beating you? Doctor Rush. Oh my God. Small boy. Not even a small boy. Talk Rush. I heard that there's this family. The talk Rush visit them. He start flogging from the father to the mother. The house is crying every night. Everybody is crying. Every night he can beat them. Beat everybody. From father to the mother. Until they, then they had to run away from their house. But thank God, for Jesus is still alive. Hallelujah. One day they went to a crusade that is being held in their community. And the man of God declared the power of God. And they were set free. They gave their heart to Jesus and began to serve Christ. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, the price has been paid. You are not supposed to even be sick. You are the one that is supposed to be looking for sick people and healing them. Yeah. Signs and wonders should follow those that believe. Yeah. In my name, yeah. they will cast out devils. Yeah. In my name, they will, they, 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 they will drink deadly poison and nothing will hand them. Amen. And look at you. Small, dead, small thing, small deadly thing. You are landing in the hospital. Mm. 
You, whether you eat it in the dream or eat it in the physical, you will land in the hospital. But yet, they will drink deadly poison and nothing. They will speak in a new tongue. They will pick up serpents with their hand. But to you, if they tell you that there is a snake there, you will not come out from your house anymore. <laughs> but yet, they should pick it by their hand. Nothing will happen. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick will be healed. That is the sign that is supposed to be following you. That is what's supposed to be following you everywhere you go to. This is the tools we are supposed to win on believers. This is our tools. Nobody goes to work without God giving them tools. When Jesus was sending them Moses, he said to him, make sure you take this rod with which you will do signs and wonders. Amen. When Jesus was sending his disciples, he said, signs and wonders will follow them that believe. God will never send you to go there without giving you tools to work. Yeah. Every company that I employ you will give you tools to, for you to accomplish your assignment. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? Yeah. And that's what God has done for me and you. We are powerful. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, God has made all kings and priests unto the Lord our God. Yeah. That we may reign here. You are not born again to suffer again. You are born again to reign again. Yeah. You will be reigning before. You were dislodged. Overthrown. When you became a born again, you are you thrown back. Authority comes back to you. You begin to rule and reign. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Revelation 11, verse 15, the Bible says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ. And that kingdom is within you. In other words, wherever you enter and the kingdom of darkness is ruling there, you suppose you have the power to overthrow them. Amen. You have such power. You have it, my brother. You have it, my sister. Stop looking down on yourself. The glory of God rests upon you. Amen. You are created for glory. That's what the Bible told us in the book of Isaiah 43, verse 7. You are created for glory. And we are busy running away from problems. The Bible said the whole earth shall be covered with the glory of God. When you look at the earth today, do you see the glory of God anywhere? Answer me, brothers and sisters. When you look at the world today we are living, do you see anything like the glory of God around there? <coughs> Not, is it? <coughs> but that's why we are mistaken. But the glory is everywhere. When Lazarus was sick to die, what did Jesus say? He said, this sickness is where? Unto the glory of God. So the glory of God, and that will say the, the earth will be covered with the glory of God as the water covered the sea. And we cannot see it. The only thing we are seeing troubles. The only thing we are seeing problems. In the book of Isaiah, the Bible said the angels, they cry, holy, holy, holy God Almighty. He said the whole earth is covered with the glory. The angels on heaven are they are they say that the whole earth is covered with glory. Me and you we are only seeing troubles. Why? Because our eyes need to open. That problems in your community, it is for the glory of God. Yeah. That sickness in this in this South Africa, it is for the glory of God. That our man is in prison, our man is irresponsible. It's for the glory of God. It's for the time for the women to rise up and say, Satan, enough is enough. Let me tell you the reason why women are suffering everywhere is because of the battle going on between women and Satan. Yeah. He say, You, I will set you up an enmity between you and the devil. Mm -hmm. Why is the women so vulnerable on death today? Because the war is still going on. And all we are doing is making up between our hair, put up on lipstick, and everything. That's what we are doing. Looking for human here from Brazil, from China, from everywhere, from the sea. You cannot even fight from the sea. Instead of rising up to take what belongs to God and say, Satan, enough is enough. You cannot no longer take our children. Draws I command you in the name of Jesus. You, that the spirit of addiction, may God punish you. May God strike you. Leave my boy alone. Leave my daughter alone. Satan, get out of my house. That's what we should be doing. Look at people that pray and things happen. Women. Amen. 